we've already looked at uh, this point of why do we need a theory of generalization and the key assumption that drives back learning, which is this fixed but unknown distribution that generates from which all data sets are sampled by ID. This section defines the path model for learning and uh, uh, probably uh, in the next lecture, uh, I'll make formal connections to this sort of a philosophical concept of Occam's razor. In fact, we'll prove, we'll be looking at a few theorems that are all called Occam's razor theorems. So before we go there, let's just look at what fact learning is. And there's a lot of notation that we have gone through, and I just decided to pack it all into uh, one slide. Um, we have the instance space, we have the concept space, we have the hypothesis space. We have training examples that are drawn IID from a fixed but unknown distribution. And our goal is to evaluate our uh, our goal is to uh, evaluate our hypothesis on future examples that are drawn from this distribution. If you summarize all the symbols that we saw before, we have X, the instance space, capital Y, the label space or the output space, which contains just two elements, minus one or one. There is D, which is a fixed but unknown distribution. F is the unknown target function that we seek to learn that can take any instance to a label. Little h, which uh, uh, is a hypothesis function that our learner chooses from a hypothesis space capital H. S is a set of training examples. Error D is the is the true error or the generalization error, which we just spoke about. And error S is the empirical error, which is the fraction of examples in some set S that the learner, that the hypothesis is agreed to the two concepts. All these symbols are going to keep showing up. Um, I just wanted to put them all on one side so that um, you, they, they seem familiar to you. The goal of pack learning is uh, to describe or maybe bound the true error in terms of the empirical error. The empirical error is what we can measure. It's something that we can actually use a data set to measure. We can count how many examples is a classified vector we say. The true error is what we care about. Can we say that the true error is not going to be too far off from the empirical error? Because then we might be able to use the empirical error and do interesting things with it. Mm -hmm. And by that bound, we'll be able to get some guarantees about the true error. Another goal of fact learning is to ask, are certain concepts learnable? In fact, one of the cool results that we'll show kind of it come, this jumps out of the theory is that certain concepts that we'll encounter are unlearnable. There is, it is, it, it, it's impossible to learn certain concepts. The other question is, it's not just whether certain concept is learnable, but are there certain concepts that in, in a set C that are, that is this set here, that can be learned using a different set of functions, H. If so, how well can we approximate it? How far off from the empirical error will the true error be? And how many examples do we need to guarantee good performance? What does good performance mean? It means true error is less than some uh, epsilon, some number epsilon. These are the kinds of questions that this theory seeks to answer. And the, the key point here is, the, the, the key, sort of key intuition here is, of course, we can never expect that the learner will always succeed. We can't expect that the learner will learn the true concept exactly. Why? Because we own a finite number of examples and uh, maybe are somehow skewed in a certain way. Um, and moreover, we only have a finite number of examples and there are guaranteed to be multiple functions that are all consistent with the same data. How do you know which one of those you pick? Maybe you pick one and in hindsight, nature says, oh, you're wrong everywhere. You pick the wrong one. It's possible, right? So we, we cannot actually uh, have the guarantee that we will be, we'll learn the true function exactly. Because unseen examples might have any label because nature chooses a different function that is also consistent with the data. So the only thing we can do is let's just agree that uh, we will misclassify examples. We will make mistakes on examples that are rare. We will live with that error. We can't do anything about it. Let's just live with it. Okay. So that's the first sort of a uh, sort of a uh, toned down expectation that we can assign to learning. 
The second one is, while it is true that sometimes we hope to learn, a, uh, we, we, while it's true that we hope to learn a close approximation of the two functions, sometimes we might be so unlucky in the training data that came to us that even that is not possible. We just got so unlucky with the training data that was sampled that it only had lousy examples that don't actually help the learner. As a result, you just learn, you, you're not even able to learn a close approximation. So these are two different ways in which learning can fail. Learning can fail because you cannot learn the exact function. You have to learn. The only thing we can hope for is an approximation. And learning can fail because even then, even if we are resigned to learning an approximation, maybe in some cases just by bad luck with the training data, we are not going to learn a close approximation. So the only realistic expectation that we can have is that a good learner is one that will learn a close approximation most of the times. A good learning algorithm will learn a close approximation of the true concept with high probability. And this is, in some sense, the idea that the definition of pack learning formalizes. And the next thing is actually to define the uh, thing formally, but I don't want to uh, spend the next four minutes showing you a complicated definition only for to restate it at the end of the at the start of next lecture. So I want to kind of stop here, or I want to pause here for questions because this is a non-trivial concept. Are there questions? Do you have a question? Yes. So uh, does it summarize the pack learning determines whether we can learn a concept plus? No, pack learning is just uh, 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 just like with mistake bond learnability, we define a certain concept class is learnable in the mistake bond model if certain conditions are true. With pack learning, will the definition will say a certain concept is learnable by some algorithm in the pack model if, with high probability, the algorithm will learn a close approximation of the con any concept from that class. Other questions? So a brief historical interlude here. Um, pack learning was defined by in a 1984 paper by Leslie Valiant called the theory of the learnable. At this time, this this was the first sort of, uh, uh, or this is one of the most sort of productive ideas that uh, that came about in machine learning, and it kind of spawned this field of computational learning theory. A lot of computational learning theory goes back to that one paper. Um, and directly as an offshoot of that theory, we kind of started understanding a better grasp of how to control overfitting and how do you avoid, um, uh, how do you build models that don't just memorize the training data and such things. And those exact ideas led to algorithmic improvements. And those algorithmic improvements actually stay with us to, today where uh, they are kind of part of standard um, things that we have to do for any learning, for deploying any learning, no matter whether if it's a linear classifier or a multi-layer neural network, we just do it by default. So this is a really uh, sort of historically important concept that also led to very pra important practical um, uh, advances in machine learning. And thanks to this, Leslie Valiant also uh, was awarded the Turing Award. Uh, I think around 2010 or nine or something like that. Okay. Um, any questions? So, uh, even if um, we give a class for the motion, why not training set is still not representative? It's possible, right? I mean, if your training set is not representative, it's all the data you have. What, imagine, but I'll give you a horrible training set. Okay? Imagine that I have to decide whether a certain, um, tweet is a positive uh, tweet or a negative tweet about some company. And I'm going to now collect a training data set. My training data set is going to contain only negative tweets, nothing but negative tweets. I have sampled my data so poorly that only negative tweets are in the data. No learning algorithm will learn anything except all tweets are negative. So you are you just got unlucky in the choice of your training data. All right, let's stop here. Um, don't forget your homework and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday.